Let's make our game production ready by transforming it from this to this. Start! Two. Hi, in this video we will finish our game to learn hiragana and katakana. We will mainly focus on the design. Thanks a lot to Camilla who prepared the beautiful 3D models we will be working with. Hello, my name is Camilla and I am 3D artist. You can see more of my works on my Instagram. The link will be below. Subscribe! I'll show you how to add any character animation with Mixamo and Blender, we'll do some minor game fixes, upgrade the menu and enhance the overall scene lighting. Ready to make your game looks pro? While playing the game I noticed an issue with the E character, it should be E and not E. Thank you ChatGPT. Also, the kicker is too fast, let's reduce it to 4. Here are the lovely models from Camilla, a wonderful 3D scene and Fall Guys like characters. Unfortunately, at the time I'm recording the video, it's not ready for animation, as the body and clothes meshes are in conflict. She might send me an updated version in the future that I will share with you in my socials. The Blender files are on GitHub if you want to play with. Here is what it looks like rendered with Blender. As I need the middle stage for our game, I moved the items into the background and added the turret to keep the Japanese vibe. Let's create our model folder for the stage and copy paste the exported GLTF there. Then run GLTF JSX to generate the React model from the mesh. Copy everything from the generated model file, create a new stage component and paste here. Fix the path to models stage in the preload and load function and rename the component to stage. To add our lovely scene, first go to experience, remove the tori and add the stage to the group. Then remove the cylinder mesh but keep the collider as the size of our model is the same. Currently our character is below the floor. Let's decrease the stage position, better but we still need many adjustments. Let's fix the lighting by removing the ambient light and using the environment component from the dry library with the sunset preset. We also decrease a bit the intensity of our direction light. Looks good but our reflection floor is too much exposed. Let's get rid of it, we don't need it anymore and switch to a mesh basic material with a non-tone mapped color to have the exact pink color I expected using CSS. It's still too high, let's move it in the group with a minus 1 Y position and adjust the position of the floor to minus 0.9. In the app, change the background color to the same pink and let's remove the fog. Way better, but we need some shadows. Let's use the contact shadows component with one frame. As our elements don't move, we only need to calculate the shadows once. We make them slightly transparent, you can adjust the parameters to your preference. Looks way better with our soft shadows. I found this example of the mesh physical material from Dry and I thought it would be perfect to make our character stand out. Let's copy the config and paste it in Kana spots. To have access to use controls, we need to add our old friend Leva. Now we have it. Add a sphere next to the center wrapper of the text 3D component. Use a mesh physical material with the config. Now you have this, play with the parameters to find what works best for you. Once you have it, replace all the values from use controls, but keep it, it's very useful if you want to adjust them anytime later. Let's scale up our sphere and adjust its position slightly to the top. Here is what I ended with, lovely no? Now we can change the text 3D material to a mesh standard material of a color of your choice. To get rid of leva pop-up, go to app and add the component with the hidden prop next to the canvas. Here we are. Our text in the middle of the story looked bad. Let's use another font, I downloaded Poppins from Google Fonts, and paste the extra bold file in the fonts folder. Instead of having the text inside the story, let's move it to the middle of our stage floor. Adjust the position, font size and rotation. Add the path to the font file and change the color to white. Now it looks way more integrated to the game. To make it easier to understand our mistakes while playing, let's display the wrong character when we hit one. We use last wrong Kana, put the text a bit below, smaller and red. Grab the last wrong Kana from the store, and because it doesn't exist yet, let's create it. Add it next to current Kana, reset it in the next stage function, 
and set its value in Kana Touch when it's the wrong answer. Here it is, a way better game experience. Let's animate our Mail 3D model. In Blender, remove everything and import the GLTF model file. You can switch to Material Preview if you don't see the texture. And export it as an FBX file. Go to Mixamo and hit Upload Character. By chance, it is already rigged, but no worry, if it's not the case, Mixamo will help you automatically rig it. Hit Next. Don't worry about the texture, we will only take the animation from Mixamo. After you played for 2 hours with the funny ones, choose one running and idle animation. I chose a Naruto running one to keep our Japanese vibe. Hit in place to avoid our model position to change. Hit download and download. Go back to Blender, import the FBX file you got from Mixamo. You should see a second model in your scene. Open the bottom animation panel and go to the action editor and rename it to run. I renamed my original character to avoid making mistakes. Select it and open the pose mode. In the action editor, open the action list and select the run animation. Now your character can run. Hit push down to really attach it to the model. Move from the top sheet view to nonlinear animation. Rename the NLA track to run. You can now delete the imported model from Mixamo. To add other animation, just download others from Mixamo and import them here. To use it with 3JS, we export it as a GLTF file. Select GLTF embedded and check compression to reduce the file size. You can rerun a GLTF GSX to avoid any model changes you made. Copy paste the group to the character component. Check if it still works. Perfect. We'll use our game store to store the current player state. Declare a character state with idle, it needs to be the same name than the animation. Then add a function to update the character state. Let's get the character state and set character state in the character controller. And declare a constant name runvel. We'll use it to detect at what speed we consider our player is running. In the useFrame function, after the code in charge to move the character, we check if the current speed is over our running velocity. If it's the case and that we are not already running, we set the character state to run. Else, we set it to idle. Now in our character model component file, we get the character state. We create a use effect to detect changes on it. We get the animations from the model and get actions with use animations to be able to play pause them. Then in our use effect, we fade in the current animation and in the return, we fade out the previous animation. Our character now runs, but the animation takes too much time. We can reduce the fading to 0.2. Way better, but it stops too late. To fix this, we can go back to the character controller and increase the runval constant to 1.5. Nice! In the app component, we can remove the debug in physics, as we know our colliders are set correctly. It looks way better without those visual helpers. Let's create a camera animation when the game starts. In character controller, we declare a target camera position instead of assigning directly the camera position values. If we are in the game, let's say the Y value should be 6. And in the menu, let's put it to 0. Now we lerp into that target camera position to make it smooth. Don't forget to get the delta from useFrame function and get the game state from the store. And it doesn't work. I made a typo in the target camera position, forgetting the dot .z. Perfect, we now have a good looking animation. Let's also learn the camera look at. We need to get the current world position of what our camera looks at. So we get the direction with get word direction and the position with get word position. Then to get the current look at, we use the camera position and add the direction of the camera. It gives us where our camera currently looks at. Now we have that vector, we can create a lerp version with lerp vectors from our current look at to the target look at. Now we need to look at the lerp looked at vector. In the experience, we can also remove the orbit controls to prevent the user to play with it. Now our camera smoothly follow our character. Time to enhance our menu by adding some explanation text, changing the button labels and adding links to my YouTube channel and Camilla Instagram. As a web developer, never forget to try the links. In the index.css, add the poppins font and fine tune it to what you like. It's a bit better. Let's add a fade in animation when our menu appears with a CSS animation. 
Nice, but we have another issue. We are not waiting for the model to load before showing it. Next to the canvas, let's use the loader component from dry library and only display the menu when progress is equal to 100. That way it will only fade in after the app is ready. Get progress from use progress hook. We now have the loader, then our menu fade. When we hit play, it takes time before loading it. If we look at the network, we can see it's because of the two fonts we have. In dry library, there is a preload function on the use font hook, but it arrived recently and it's not in my current version from dry. Let's update it to the latest by removing it and adding it again. Now we have preload function available, we can set the path to our font. For the 2D text, we'll cheat a bit. We'll remove the condition to display the Kana, and if we don't have one, we display Kana game on the floor. That will automatically load with the main loader at the beginning. Now when we hit play, it smoothly starts. We can move the starting Y camera position to make an animation from 20 to 0 in the menu. I used Figma to prepare an SVG background with Japanese characters. Let's add it to the assets folder. In the CSS on the menu and scores, add the background image and set it to a repeat pattern of 200 pixels. Hope you'll like it. Now the final touch. Change the title of the HTML page. Start! Ha! Seikai! Yeah! Dai Seikai! Hmm? Gambatta ne! Hmm? Sanen de shita! Excellent! Sa! Seikai! Oh! I hope you enjoyed this last episode of the Kana game. I really had a great time doing it and I'm very happy with the final result. If you want to continue practicing on it, I would recommend you add a progression system and try to save the user's success and mistakes into the local storage or into database to help it learn over time. You could also display statistics and a special badge when the player successfully guessed all characters. Or if you're crazy enough, add Kenjis and create a real product around it. Thanks again to Camilla for the models and thanks a lot to you who are already 8.5 thousand on this channel, it's crazy. If you want to learn more about 3GS and React 3 Fiber, jump to the next tutorial available here.